together, we work, we work together, together, and we, and prosper. we prosper together. Hello, and welcome to everyone wanting to learn more about the real life experiences of being an international student in the United States. I'm Jennifer Donahue, and I'm the Assistant Director for International Student Services at the George Washington University here in Washington, D.C. Today's program is brought to you by Education USA, a United States Department of State network of over 400 advising centers in 170 countries where millions of international students each year find information about how to apply to accredited U.S. colleges and universities. We're joined today by three students who have come to the U.S. to continue their studies. Perhaps we'll have you introduce yourself and let us know your home country and field of study here in the United States. Alejandro, why don't we start with you? Hi, I'm Alejandro. I'm from Venezuela, and I studied international relations and international business. Hi, I'm Mishaba. I'm from Bangladesh, and I go to GW, and I study organizational sciences. Hi, uh, I'm Patrick Wen. I, uh, I come from China. I study international economic relations at American University. Welcome. You can join the conversation by signing into the chat space next to the video on this screen. You can also ask your questions via Twitter with the hashtag StudyInTheUSA. We'll begin answering your questions in real time momentarily, but let's first go to our viewing audience in Brasilia. Hi, Brazil. Thank you all for joining. Do you have a question for any of our students? Do all universities require an essay for admission, and what are they about? So writing an essay for admission to a U.S. institution of higher education, you've all had experience doing that. Patrick, do you have some ideas to share? Well, I, um, I, uh, I came here to, for a master's de degree, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a little bit different than undergrad uh, education application. But uh, yes, I, I need to write a personal statement as well. Yeah, and uh, that basically is, a, is an essay that's saying, why do you want to st study in this program, and uh, what do you plan to do with this program after you graduate? And Ishaba, bringing our undergraduate experience, mm -hmm. yes, uh, share. Yeah, I had to write a couple of essays, actually. Um, it depends a lot on the university you're applying for, because um, every university has a different requirement for their essay. Uh, you'll probably have to write a personal statement, which is basically just um, declaring yourself and telling the university why they should pick you. And then aside from that, you'll probably have to write uh, an essay about a topic that they give you or about um, someone who inspires you or a moment that changed your life. Anything that sort of is convincing enough to um, have them admit you. Mm -hmm. And Alejandro, what was your experience? Yes, I also had to write a, an essay for American University. and. Um, it's mostly about a life experience that you've had and something that really makes you stand out so that you can be admitted into the university. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Do you have any more questions for us, Brazil? Um, yes. Um, how did you choose your university? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Alejandro, how did you choose to study at American University? Well, I, when I got accepted into American University, they uh, told us to come in for like a acceptance day, and we got a chance to look at the campus. And for me, it was really the campus. The campus at American is really nice and it's really beautiful. And uh, I mean, I knew that uh, American had a very good program in international relations, and that's why I decided to uh, to go to American University. Yeah, it's very attractive. Any Shaba, George Washington University? Yeah, for me it was all about location. Um, I was born and I grew up in a city, so I didn't want to go to a school that wasn't in the city. Uh, I didn't want to have to sit on a train for 30 minutes just to go into the city. I would rather have been there. Um, and GW is very central. It's downtown DC. DC is also an amazing city. Um, and then also because my brother went to GW, so there was a little bit of that as well. All in the family. All in the family. All right. <laughs> now we're going to go to some online questions from our audience online. Let's take a few moments to hear what they have for us. Um, so as you decided to study in the United States, um, 
What were some of the challenges that you first experienced when you arrived here? I know it's a big process adjusting, getting to know friends, getting to know the university. Ishaba, what was your experience with that? Um, challenges, I think um, the biggest one for me was moving from a really small school to a really big school. I went to a private school in Bangladesh um, where my graduating class was only 32 students. And then coming here, it's you go to this massive university where there's people from all over the world and it's such a big population. I think uh, moving to a new country and then not having people that you already know is quite difficult because mm -hmm. you have to familiar, familiarize yourself with everything and there's not that sense of home and there's not that sense of familiarity already instilled. You mm -hmm. have to make it for yourself and I think that's quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Now, it's my understanding that sometimes you may experience culture shock or things like that. Patrick, have you experienced that at all? Culture shock. I mean, uh, I exchanged before coming mm -hmm. to the United States, so I, uh, I know a little bit about um, how things are different or are, did, are done differently in other countries. But um, still, coming to the United States, um, the language is a, a huge challenge for me. Um, I, before coming here, I already studied English for like um, 10 years in Chinese uh, educational system. But still, uh, when the professor is talking in the lectures, you still can't understand uh, many of the words and, and expressions. And it takes a long time and effort, a lot of effort to, to catch up and ask your friends or go to the office hours and to see uh, what they actually mean. Mm -hmm. uh, but fortunately, um, the US colleges are very accommodating to, to your um, need in this respective. Um, there's always, the professors always happy, happy to see you in the um, office hours. And uh, I, as far as my friends, they are very friendly too. Wonderful. Yeah. So you were all abroad and you're thinking about studying in the United States. What made you want to do that, Ishaba? Um, it was sort of inevitable that I was going to come here. Um, my parents really value an American education. Uh, even while I was in Bangladesh, I went to the American International School. Um, so it was just, it was going to happen. There was no other option. Um, I didn't consider any other country. The U.S. was just my only option. Um, but that being said, it's very uncommon for um, kids to come abroad from Bangladesh because um, it's a very poor country. So if you are able to come abroad, it's definitely um, a privilege. And so I'm really thankful that I got to come abroad, but it, I really didn't have any other choice. For me, it was always the U.S. And Alejandro, you did some high school here. Yes, And yes, what I made did. you decide to also pursue a college experience in the United States? Well, I, I figured that, a, and I knew that uh, by coming to study college here in the U.S., I would have more opportunities to grow as a, as a professional and then as a student as well. I could learn so much here studying in the U.S., and basically, yeah, those were the two um, things that made me come to study in college in the U.S. So as you prepared to apply, what were the standardized tests that you had to take to be admitted, Patrick? Um, for graduate degrees, um, it varies. If you're pursuing for a um, business degree, then uh, it, it is, um, uh, what is it called again? Uh, uh, GMAT. 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 Yeah. Thank you, GMAT. Uh, if it's more like engineering or economics, then it's GRE. Mm -hmm. And of course, you always have to take the language test, which is, can be either TOEFL or um, EADS uh, in the British system. And uh, I believe for undergrads, you have to take SAT, but that's, I would love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah, I took, uh, I took so many. I took the SATs, I took the ACTs, and I took the TOEFLs. Um, and the thing with the SATs and the ACTs is that either or is accepted. So it depends, whichever one you do better on, you go ahead and submit. The TOEFL I had to do because I don't come from an English-speaking um, country. Mm -hmm. So if you don't hold a passport um, from an English-speaking country, then you're required to take the TOEFL to prove that you have English proficiency. Um, and then different universities have different requirements for the scores for each standardized test. And what kind yeah. of preparation did you do to prepare for those exams, Alejandro? Well, I, I, I he did some tutoring. They tutored me, and um, I also went to uh, a center in which they gave uh, classes mm -hmm. to prepare me for those exams. But uh, the, the, the classes were really good. I mean, they, they really prepare you for these exams. And, but uh, what I would suggest to anybody who is going to take the exams, like, don't, don't stress about it. If you study, you're going to do good. Good, good advice. 
Now, before you came and you knew you would come study here, you'd gotten your letter, you knew you were coming, your admission letter, were you nervous about coming? And did your parents come with you on that first trip or did you come on your own, Alejandro? No, my parents uh, did come with me. Uh, they came with me both times, first to the high school and then mm -hmm. to college. But yeah, it's definitely a relief that they came with me because if not, it, I think it would have been a, a, a farther, a, a greater difficult uh, experience. Mm -hmm. And Patrick is a graduate student? Uh, I came by myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I was nervous. And um, um, it, it's a two year commitment, and you'd have no idea where you would be. Um, after two years, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you come to the United States from thousands of miles away and, and all your friends and family are left behind. You have to venture into this new land and you don't know anyone. You don't speak their language very well and you probably have to find a job afterwards. And all these things would just um, seem very challenging in front of you. But as time goes by, I find as things come by, you just do it. And uh, it's not as, as hard as you think. Excellent point. So it's my understanding that most institutions provide some sort of an orientation program. So I'm sure you attended that. And how beyond that did you get acclimated to the university, Ashaba? Um, one of the biggest things that I tell um, every international student is like the, the best thing you can do for yourself is to get involved on campus. Because when you... Um, when you keep to yourself and when you keep yourself isolated, everything gets worse. You get lonelier, everything feels a lot more stressful, you get more nervous. So the best thing to do is to join a student org, uh, join Greek life, do whatever you have to do to get acclimated and to meet people. I think that's the most important thing. Um, orientation is great, you can meet a lot of people at orientation, but the chances of you actually maintaining those friendships um, are, are quite small, so I would recommend that you join something that interests you. Personally, I joined College Radio because I love music and I love talking and I love um, mm -hmm. broadcast. So I joined radio and I met some amazing people and I definitely felt a lot more at home. And how else have you plugged in to the institution? Um, I also joined um, the Student Association and I decided to represent myself as an international student. That's also a great thing that you can do because you are, um, that, that's what makes you unique is that you're an international student and compared to a huge college um, population, you're just a tiny, tiny little student, like tiny little population. So when you put yourself out there and you represent yourself as an international student, it makes you different, it makes you unique and you have all these stories and experiences you can tell people that other people won't have. Um, and I think if you can find a leadership position um, with that in mind, then it's definitely gonna make you stand out. And Patrick, as a graduate student, mm -hmm. was it a little different for you? Oh, it's very different. Okay. There's no more clubs or, mm -hmm. or fraternities for you to join. But um, I think um, for graduate students, the intention is much, more, uh, much clearer. You come to the United States either to pursue a professional degree, which means uh, you want to uh, go to a better job or you want to advance in the a, in a level, current level of your job, or you go to a PhD degree um, and say, you, I, you, I want to do research afterwards. And uh, graduate um, student life is more like going to school, uh, research, do, read your papers, write your papers, talk with professors. Uh, I mean, that, that's, by no means it means there's no social life. You still hang out with your friends in the program or in the school. But it's, uh, it's different. And I mean, uh, Ishawa is a very capable person. Uh, she has taken a lot of leadership roles. But you don't have to do that to, to survive in the mm -hmm. U.S. campus. Every, per every person has a different personality. For me, I like quietness. I like, um, you know, hanging out with two or three best friends. And that's totally fine. And nobody, and that's about the United States. You, have, do, you, you do whatever you feel like, comfortable with. And your two or three best friends, are there some Americans in there too? Oh yeah, I have, uh, <laughs> I have one uh, American friend who's really close to me as well. Here Wonderful, and you I met them met. here during yeah. your studies? Yes, uh, yeah, she actually invited me to, um, to spend the Christmas with her in my first year when I felt lonely. You know, everyone left the campus, no friends are around, and uh, it was the best uh, Christmas I have had. Wonderful. Alejandro, have you made friends with some Americans during your time here? No, yes, I have definitely have made friends with, <laughs> with some Americans. Uh, and other international students as well? Yes, yes, with other international students. I mean, uh, AU is a very international uh, campus, and there are, like, um, people from all over the world, but there are also, uh, of course, Americans, and the Americans are very, very nice. 
a, a, the students, the student population in general at American is very, very nice, and I'm sure across the U.S. as well. So uh, the thought is that the life in the United States can be a little pricey. Um, what is the cost of living, and how can you finance that while you're here? How do you sustain your fantastic lifestyle? <laughs> Um, I think it differs from person to person. Mm -hmm. um, some people are very fortunate and get to come here um, with a, a scholarship, and some people also get to come here um, with the help of their parents. Their parents help them finance. Um, but if you are one of the one of the few people who have who has to pay for college by yourself, it can obviously be a struggle. And I think it's just all about um, finding the right job and uh, doing well in your studies and just like maintaining your legal status just to not, mm -hmm. so as to not um, get deported. Um, but yeah, I think it depends from person to person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really um, understand the concern of financial stress. Um, before I come here, I, uh, I understand my parents would not be able to supply the, uh, the amount of money that would cost me to study and live in here. The tuition is very expensive in the United States. And uh, the, the cost of living is very high for Washington, D.C., or any metropolitan cities as well. Um, so when I was looking for universities, I intentionally looked for their um, financial aid web uh, page. Uh, you know, if you go to any university, they will normally have a financial aid page uh, that tells you we offer these and that um, financial aid packages. Some of them you can't apply because they're, like, say, government. Mm -hmm. um, uh, scholarship, but some of them you can. Uh, there are school scholarships, there are um, university scholarships, there are also um, the United States, the government also offers um, Fulbright um, scholarship, which you can apply as a foreign nationals. And uh, you want to gather as much information as you can on the website. There is also um, other resources. Um, when I was applying, there's a website called Grant Cafe which is a place where all the graduate um, applica applicants uh, discuss their um, the package they received and what university to choose from. And there are a lot of information you don't get from the official sources. Normally, the universities don't tell you, we give 20 students every year um, this scholarship. They just tell you, we have this available. You need to apply for it. Uh, and uh, learning from the other sources helps you to decide, OK, this is more likely for me to to, to get a financial aid. Great. Let's go back to Brasilia for a few more questions. Hi. Go ahead. Hi. Um, I would like to ask, what kind of extracurriculars did you do in high school, and which ones do you do now? So extracurricular activities that you did in high school and that you might have continued to do in your studies here. Well, in high school, I, did a, I played tennis, and I played basketball. And in, the, and in college, I played a little bit of tennis, and I also played a little bit of basketball with, with friends. But I also started to go to, to the gym a lot mm -hmm. and to run. So yeah, that, those were my extracurricular activities. Wonderful. Fitness, yes. Um, I did everything in high school. <laughs> I was one of those people who signed up for all the clubs and then eventually made myself like the president of the... I was just ridiculous in high school, so <laughs> maybe don't take my advice. But um, I, I, um, extracur extracurriculars are very important for admissions in the U.S. They don't just look at your transcript. They also look at what you did. So make sure you do get involved in school. Um, and then when you come to university, you can do whatever you want. Just find something that you like and then and, and do it. Honestly, there's no boundaries. You can, no one's going to restrict you from doing anything. You can join whatever club, whatever organization you want, and then do whatever you want with it as well. And Patrick, oh, as a graduate my, student, well, my high school is pretty, uh, pretty boring. And as any <laughs> Chinese student, um, you study like 10 hours, 20 hours, uh, 12 hours a day, and you go home and eat and do homework and sleep and wake up the next morning and go to school again. So uh, yeah. This, it was pretty boring, but uh, what about if you, now? What about now? Any extracurriculars? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I like playing tennis. Mm -hmm. I um, I like going hiking, and there are a lot of uh, places where you can go hiking uh, around here. The other Americans like go hiking, uh, going hiking, um, and you can. I think there are a lot of clubs where you can join, uh, which you can join, mm -hmm. and. Um, it doesn't doesn't matter which one you like. There's always the people, uh, the, the group that um, that fits your interest. 
That's my feeling. Activities make well-rounded students. Uh, we have time for another question from Brazil. Um, how different was the student-teacher relation when compared to high school? Mm -hmm. So how did the relationship with your teachers change from the high school setting to the college setting, Alejandro? Well, uh, compared to a uh, high school in mm -hmm. Venezuela, um, uh, teachers in, in Venezuela uh, are less approachable than teachers here in, in the United States and uh, in here, here in the United States you, you can definitely go to the to the professors and talk to them and they want to see you do well in school and they want to get to know you and know uh, what are your interests and what are your 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 hobbies and and you can really build on the student uh, teacher relationship wonderful Patrick have you had the same experience um, yeah I think high school in China and uh, colleges in the United States are entirely different. Um, mm -hmm. In high school we have this um, classes which you are like 50 students and get together and you always sit in the one classroom and teachers come in and teach you the language or math or geography and get out and the next teacher comes in. But in college uh, you have you make your own um, schedule of classes. You select the classes you like and you take the book and you go to the classroom where the teacher is going to teach and then uh, you, it's normally um, one or two hours and after class you read more, you do a lot of reading up by yourself and you discuss with friends or do homeworks together, do group projects or go to office hours of the professor and it's much more about independent learning than uh, in a high school. Thank you, Brasilia, for the wonderful questions. Our online audience can continue to ask questions to our students joining me here in the chat space. You can do so by logging into the chat or via Twitter by using the hashtag study in the USA. So, what is the US classroom like? And how is it different from the classroom experience in your home country? And is it fun? Do you enjoy it at the master's level? What, what do you think? Is the classroom experience fun, interactive? In the master's level, it's more um, academic, more mm -hmm. professional. Uh, especially, I study in a, in a professional school which focuses on international affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about real reality in the world, say, for example, um, the trade agreement between China and US, and you talk about uh, well, how this agreement comes into being, and it's very um, professional. It's not like it's not for fun, but um, some professor, the teaching style of professors still differ. Mm -hmm. uh, some are more fun, some are more like read the text and let's discuss, right? That kind of thing. But it's it's very different uh, in terms of classroom setting than mm -hmm. than in China. And have your English language skills improved from when you first started your journey studying here in the United States, Alejandro? De definitely. Yeah. I, I, can, I, I believe that uh, once you make that step to, to come and study here in the United States, your English will definitely improve because you'll have to write essays and you'll have to make presentations, oral mm -hmm. presentations, and you'll have to go and talk to a professor. So there are a lot of opportunities that uh, for your English to improve and you'll see that because you're doing all these things that your English will definitely improve. Andy Shaba, as you've known friends over the course of your experience as an undergrad, have you, other international students, have you seen their English language skills improve? Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, I think it, it just sort of happens. You're, mm -hmm. the, like Alejandro said, you're forced to talk to professors, you're forced to interact with other students, and it requires you to, to improve your English whether you like it or not. You're going to have to do it. Um, and it's the primary language here, so um, knowing a little bit definitely helps. But when you do go to school here for four years, um, it definitely improves. Like Even myself, even though I sp um, spoke English fluently, um, coming here, my accent's gotten so much stronger. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's. I mean, it, it'll change. It'll happen. So if you're if you're worried that you won't be able to communicate, don't worry about it. Okay. Just, just listen to you. <laughs> speak in English, and you you'll see how it's like. Yeah. yeah. So I know, as undergrads, and sometimes even as grads, we kind of change direction. We may change our major. If a student enters studying liberal arts, can they later change? A major, a change focus, change to a different program. Did any of you do that? And what was your experience like? Well, I personally didn't do it, but I know a lot of people who have done it, mm -hmm. and there's no problem with it. I mean, it's totally fine to have a different interest midway through your undergraduate 
studies mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes uh, what they advise you to do if you don't know what you really want to study is that you can the first two years of your undergrad career you can take a lot of different courses like electives and, uh, yeah electives mm -hmm. and try to figure out from there wh what really interests you what really what are you really passionate about but yeah there are a lot of uh, options to choose from yeah, the great thing about um, American universities is they don't require you to come in with a major. Um, so you can come in undeclared and then take some electives and decide what you want to do. Um, and you can change your major. Um, I believe you have until second semester sophomore year to decide what you want to do. Um, second semester sophomore year is your fourth Junior? semester. Yeah. Um, and you can decide to decide what you want to do. So yeah, if you don't know what you want to do, don't worry about it. Okay, we have some online questions. Dieter from Albania, hi Dieter, asks, when is the best time of year to start looking at your options for applying to schools in the United States? What was your path? I would say probably start as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Look at the schools and know, the most important thing I know, I see a lot is students come to the United States not knowing what they want to do. And um, it, it's not, I mean, at uh, undergrad level, probably that's okay. But uh, at graduate degrees, really, you're um, you're devoting two years or more, five years for a PhD to do one specific things, and you really want to make sure you that's what you want to do. And uh, I think um, in in terms of process, you probably want to apply, start applying, or improving your language skills, prepare for GRE and TOEFL at, at, in your third year of college if it's a four-year degree, mm -hmm. and um, by the beginning of the fourth year, you should be able to, you should finish all the tests and uh, be able to submit the applications because for the top universities in the United States, deadline is normally like much earlier than others. I say in in August, um, sorry, September mm -hmm. or October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you started thinking about studying here, how did you choose which institution to attend? Was it looking online at websites? Was it talking to friends? Was it word of mouth? Was it experiences? Was it alumni? How did you decide ultimately what inspired you? Um, yeah, so my, the, the advice that my, counselor, my high school counselor gave me mm -hmm. um, in terms of school is everyone, or everyone might or everyone should or everyone maybe does <laughs> have like a dream school like a school that you really really want to go to put that on the top of your list and then come up with some schools that you can definitely get into and then put schools that are your safety schools um, that uh, you would maybe go to if you didn't get into anything else on your list um, and then once you have um, I think probably a solid list is probably made up of like 10 universities. And you apply to all 10, and then whichever one you get into, you get time to decide. Um, I started thinking about this um, my en the end of 11th grade, um, mm -hmm. because I knew that 12th grade meant taking SATs and taking um, other like school exams, and that I had to have made a decision by December of um, my 12th grade. So as soon as you're done with 11th grade, um, start thinking about it, and if you're able to, um, do college tours. If you're able to travel to the U.S., um, then def I definitely recommend it. Now, in the classroom setting, what would you say is the most interesting class you've taken in college? And it could, have been elect it could have been a tennis class, but <laughs> what was the most interesting <laughs> that's topic? A, that's a good yeah. question. Uh, I, would have to, I would have to say that... Um, uh, social entrepreneurship mm -hmm. uh, was really interesting. We we discussed a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations and uh, organizations that are uh, that are uh, created for a social purpose. And it's really nice to see um, how many uh, individuals uh, throughout the world and how many organizations throughout the world are interested in helping the world uh, develop. I mean, I'm very interested in international develop mm -hmm. development. So this class really fit into what my interests were. Wonderful. It inspired your entrepreneurial spirit. That's fantastic. Yeah, exactly, yes. And Ishava? Um, I took a stress management class mm. once. Uh, mm -hmm. That was actually very useful mm -hmm. and not as easy as you might think. Um, it, was, it, 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 it was very helpful. Um, I took it during one of my most stressful semesters, so I figured that taking it would help me get through the semester, and it definitely did. And you learn so much more about um, staying calm and managing your stress and all the stuff that your body does when you're stressed that you never knew that it did, and you um, learn all the skills to control it, and it's, it's a very useful class. It's wonderful. Patrick? The, the 
my favorite class in, in here is uh, called negotiation skills, mm -hmm. which uh, is entirely different than anything I've ever taken. Um, we still read books. We uh, read uh, what people analyze about uh, negotiations, but uh, the most majority of the class we spend um, in group settings and we discuss cases. For example, um, different we represent different countries and talk about the uh, pressing issues between different countries. Why? I, I don't agree with you why we have conflicts and how do we negotiate with each other so we, we can avoid the worst outcome and uh, make a make a agreement that is best for everyone. It is a very practical class um, and the group the teacher encourages your personal um, you know creative performance and um, it's very unique experience for me. Wonderful. So negotiation, stress management, entrepreneurial leadership. Well, you've got a great team here. <laughs> um, before you came to the United States, if, if you could think back at that time and tell some students who are thinking about coming now, what could they be doing to prepare to be successful here? What preparations did you do before you came? Ishaba? Um, do a lot of research. Do mm -hmm. your research. Um, you might think that you know what the U.S. is like, but um, you you know you might not as well so I would say just Google like the basic things like what's the weather like um, in the state that you're going to um, what the town is like um, if there's good restaurants and stuff around also research banks because you have to come and create a bank account so make sure you look that up uh, things like um, what phone line to subscribe to um, apartment options dorm options just do just do your research I would say spend a solid um, three or four hours doing research I think it's really helpful and and it'll teach you a, a lot of things and you can also teach your parents so that when you guys come together they're not overwhelmed with all this information because you know a lot of it. Patrick? I may be different I mean <laughs> I, I'm the anxious type I, I, I went before stress I, management class. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably <laughs> before coming here I spent like days and days looking through the website and see oh what is it like to study in the USA what should I do what should I pack in my mm -hmm. bag luggage yeah. And everything. What uh, electronic um, device can I use in the United States? What not? Uh, it took me a long time, but it was fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one thing I want to um, tell my friends uh, who has hasn't come to the United States: is don't worry. Um, most universities um, have this um, orientation program, which will tell you everything you need to know in the first like month or so. Housing, um, where to get food, how to open a bank account, how to get a cell phone. They'll all tell you. Uh, no need to stress out. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be fine. All right. And one of our major concerns for all of us is what do we eat in the United <laughs> States? Now, I know we're known for eating lots of hamburgers, but it doesn't look like you all eat many hamburgers. <laughs> Can you talk a bit about the food options in the United States and uh, the food that's available and if you're able to find food from your home country here? I mean, of course, there are hamburgers and cheeseburgers mm -hmm, and, and bacon cheeseburgers <laughs> and uh, pizza and all those good things that uh, they like to eat here in the States. But uh, there's also a lot of um, international foods. And I've, I can find Venezuelan food in D.C. I can find Venezuelan food in most states here that I've been to. And there, there are a lot of options. There's Ethiopian food. There's um, Indian food. There's Chinese food. There's all kinds of cuisines. So... There, the, in terms of food, there are, you have a wide range of, of options. Ishaba, the same experience for you? Yeah, yeah. It's not, you're not restricted to hamburgers, don't <laughs> worry. There's, there's everything. Also, I would recommend if you are lucky enough to get a dorm with a kitchen, do some cooking. Go to the supermarket, buy some stuff, and then cook whatever you want. Um, I do it, and I love it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, also, if you move to a major city, you'll find everything that Alejandro said that you'll find and more. But if you move to a smaller town, it might be a little bit more difficult. But I say go explore and see what your options are. Have you made some dishes from your home country here to share oh, them yeah. with your friends? Mm -hmm. yeah, all sure. the time, all the time. <laughs> Any chance I get, I'll do it. <laughs> so here we are in the busy nation's capital. Um, do you feel safe here in the United States? Is safety a concern for you or not? Ishaba is our lady on the panel here today. Yeah, safety is definitely a concern for sure, especially in a, in a big city. Mm -hmm. um, but I also grew up in a city, so I'm very... Um, 
I know, I know my boundaries. I know where not to go. But like every city, there are good parts, there are bad parts. Mm -hmm. So be smart. Just um, and I, I, I'd say come with some street smarts. Know what to do and what not to. Don't talk to strangers. The things your parents teach you when you're younger. Um, I think for me in DC, I try not to walk around past 9:30. I just don't feel very safe. So if you don't feel safe, don't do it. Um, DC uh, and major cities have great access to public transport, Uber is great. So um, make use of it and just, you know, just use your head a little bit, you know, don't make any stupid decisions mm -hmm. on the street. Patrick? Yeah, well, uh, it really depends on which neighborhood you live in and mm -hmm. um, which city you are in. Uh, if you're in the Midwest, um, I'm sure if you, at, at around nine o'clock, you walk on the street, there's no one on, over there. You, and if you're in New York, it's probably gonna be, um, much crowded, and uh, if you still hang around in a in a bad neighborhood around midnight, then you're gonna get in trouble, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it really you have to do your research and take it seriously. But on the other hand, I don't worry about my safety at all. Um, you, yeah. Okay. Let's go back to Brasilia for a couple more questions and thoughts from our audience there. Hi there, I'd like to ask what kind of supper service are usually offered there? So I think that's the food dining service, yes, for those of us who have lived on campus. Ishaba, what's it like? I guess you're cooking for yourself, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, every university will have a cafeteria mm -hmm. or uh, food options, um, and you will get meal plans as well, which basically means that, like, um, the money um, for food is, like, in a, like a little card and comes with plans, like 10 meals per week or 10 meals per month. Um, and uh, I don't know, it, it kind of depends on whether or not you like campus food. I can't say much about it. I don't really eat on campus. But uh, we are lucky enough that we live in, in a metropolitan city, so we have more access to food outside the school cafeteria. Like GW has all these different um, food options, like Sweet Green and Whole Foods, which is amazing. Um, I don't know about AU, but I'm sure AU does too. Um, so yeah, it depends on the, the type of um, campus you're in, but there's cafeterias, so don't worry about food. What's the campus food like at AU? Be the honest. Food yeah. in is is pretty good i mean it has gotten better throughout the years mm -hmm. and uh but there are options i mean in in au alone there's a subway and there's a starbucks inside the the campus but there's also a dining hall that has a lot of food options mm -hmm. and there are a, like I, like we were talking there's healthy options like salad and your vegetables and your fruit but then you also have your american food your cheeseburgers your pizza your Anything that you like. The good stuff. The good stuff. Yes. yes. Even one uh, Asian food. Yes. There okay. is. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Sean from Trinidad has a question for us. As someone from a tropical climate, would you recommend applying for the fall or spring semester? Hmm. Mm. Okay. So I actually have an answer for this because right. I came from a very, very tropical place, and I applied in the spring. I applied in the spring and I came in the spring um, because I didn't know what the cold was going to be like and I didn't really want to experience it to be completely <laughs> honest. And the thing with um, applying in the spring is that you will still experience the US winter because the US winter lasts until about March-ish and then spring comes along and then you're sort of like that, it's summer and it goes from really cold to really hot depending on where you are. Um, so I would recommend coming in the spring, but I think the fall is great too because the fall is when everybody comes mm -hmm. and um, that's the best you know time of year to meet everyone. Yes. Plus the fall is beautiful in the US, it's stunning and I've never experienced fall, I come from a um, country that only has two seasons. Um, so four season, experiencing four seasons is, is awesome, so either or. And as she pointed out, it will vary depending on if you're yeah. in the East Coast or the oh, West yeah. Coast. As a Californian, it's a very different experience for me. Arturo yes. from Mexico asks, about college life, I'm planning to study computer science in the US, but I would also like to do a minor in music. Do you think I'll be overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. Juggling it all, how do you do no, it? No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, if you uh, plan your, your, your schedule and you are really passionate about studying uh, computer science as well as music. I mean, go for it. And, uh, I don't see the the point of not doing it. And if you once you start studying the things that you want to study, you'll you feel you'll feel you'll feel good about what you're doing, and you'll feel you'll get more involved, and you'll be happy. You'll your time here in the U.S. will be will be better. 
Mm -hmm. And Patrick, what do you think about if, if someone wants to study two tracks while in graduate school, what would oh. that look like? Hmm. We have we have students who do um, JDMA degrees, mm -hmm. which, means, degree. um, which means which uh, means a doctor's uh, degree in law and mm -hmm. also uh, a master's degree in um, in international affairs. It's doable. It's uh, it, it takes longer. It may you, know, you might be tired, a little bit more tired than the others, but uh, it's definitely doable. Mm -hmm. So reflecting on your experiences here, if you could go back in time and talk to yourself, right, what would you do differently? Is there anything you would have done differently before coming here as a college student? Before coming here mm -hmm. or when you first get here? Oh, I guess all of it. So is there anything you would have done differently to prepare? And then as you merged into the campus life, how would you have handled it differently if you could? I would say um, get your priorities straight. Um, you're coming to the U.S. to study, but that being said, you sh it's not like you should restrict yourself to everything else that the U.S. has to offer. So I think what I would tell myself is focus a little bit more on the studying, <laughs> because I think I got really caught up in, in the social aspects of you know being in a new country by mm -hmm. myself and being young and being around all these new people. Um, definitely don't sacrifice um, school. That's what you're here for, so make that your priority. Um, and come up with a balance is probably what I would tell myself. Um, I mean, I'm good at it now, but I wasn't when I first got here. So mm -hmm. definitely keep that in mind. And Patrick? Um, before, if I can tell myself about something before mm -hmm. coming here, I would definitely say improve English. Mm. Learn more vocabulary and practice it more. Um, but uh, I mean, in, in terms of classes, you'll learn when you, once you get here. There's no need to worry about it before coming here. Mm -hmm. it, it hasn't even started. Um, but I do wish I could have, um, I had uh, hang out more with my friends in China before I came here. Because it, you normally, once you come here, it, um, it's rather, um, how to say, it's hard to get, uh, to meet them again mm -hmm. uh, in every year or two. Mm -hmm. Alejandro, if you could talk to yourself from a few years ago, what would your message be to self? I say um, I would uh, I would have definitely have gotten involved in more uh, student organizations. Mm. I think that's a, w a great way to get involved in in different things that you might be interested in, and it's a great way to meet uh, people. So mm -hmm. I would, uh, although I have a lot of friends, uh, I think those would have been my like my reflecting mm -hmm. points of yeah. view. So I've heard a little bit about orientation. Are there other support services on campus that help you yeah. while you're living in the United States? Patrick, do you have some One ideas? of the great um, services the uh, American universities uh, provide is uh, called career service. Mm -hmm. um, I think most universities have a career center which um, not only helps you to, um, to change your resume, to go over your personal statement, um, but also uh, post the jobs. The career center specialists, they actually go out and connect with the employers and see, okay, are you, are, are you, um, um, do you have any positions available? And they'll post it on your on-campus jobs mm. and you can apply for them. And it's much easier to land a job from inside than going out to the market and compete with everyone else in the in a society, I think that's a great um, or, uh, organization on mm -hmm. campus. Ishaba, support services that you're a fan of. Yeah, career services is great. Um, definitely take advantage of that, um, as well as the ISO or the ISS, depending on what it's called in the university. What does that stand for? International Students Office mm. or International <laughs> Services. Oh no, International <laughs> Student Services. Okay. Um, <laughs> basically, an office that deals with you as an international student. They're a great resource because they they have all the information that you might need. Um, also, um, if you're ever concerned about whether you're doing something wrong or um, how to do something right, there are the people to go to. And I would also say is if you're lucky to go to a university that has a student org that's just meant for international students, join it because it's a great way to meet other international students and to not feel like um, you're constantly having to depend on administration because you have other students who can also help you. So yeah, look for, look for the ones that are d definitely going to lead you towards a brighter future. Great there, there's also the the health center mm -hmm. and the wellness oh, center. Yeah. So if you're feeling sick, you can most definitely go to the health center. Or if you're feeling homesick or are uh, going through a rough patch, you can definitely go to the wellness center. And they have uh, people that want to help you, and they they're specialized in uh, these sorts of things. 
Let's go back to Brasilia for a couple more questions. Go ahead. So, how to cope with cultural shock? Mm -hmm. The culture shock question. Yes. So, as you left your home country and merged into the United States, was there a little bit of a shock that you went through, where you might have been excited at first, and then things kind of went downhill? Perhaps they came back up. What was your experience? Mm. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, you blocked it out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> um, I think I was uh, really excited when I got here, and the culture shock didn't hit me for a while. I think once I realized that my parents aren't here, and once I realized that I'm not going to be able to、um, get my comfort food when I want it, or that I'm not going to be able to talk to my parents when I want to, that's when it was like, okay, this is real. I'm in a new country by myself. I have no one. I'm constant. I'm completely independent. And if I'm homesick, well, too bad. You know, like I just kind of have to deal with it until it's. Like a proper time in that respective country to call them and talk、mm -hmm. to them.、Um, so yeah, you know, it, it'll come to you, and I, it still comes to me. I still get culture shock to this day. You know, I've been here for three years, but it still happens.、Um, if it happens, you just have to sort of learn to cope.、Um, having friends really helps. So make sure you establish that as soon as you get here. You have a good group of friends,、um, especially friends who can、um, relate is really helpful. Having someone to talk to really helps. Again. Alejandro said that there's、um, health centers and they're trained for this. They're trained to help you with homesickness. So、um, yeah, culture shock happens. Homesickness happens. It's inevitable. It's going to happen.、Um, if you've never been to the U.S., then just coming here is going to be a culture、mm -hmm. shock.、Mm -hmm. So yeah, everyone deals with it differently. Unfortunately, we are already out of time. I'd like to thank Patrick Ishaba and Alejandro for their valuable insight today. I'm sure our online audience has benefited from your experiences and will feel comfortable when they continue their studies in the United States. Thank you to all who joined us today. A special thanks goes out to our friends in Brasilia. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember that you can continue the conversation by using hashtag #StudyInTheUSA, and many resources are available to you through the Education USA website. You can also see updates on this page about future programs in the Study in the USA series. Thank you and goodbye for now. Obrigado.